All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to cover a really cool topic called total boundedness, because is it bounded? Totally. So what does total boundedness mean? It has to do with metric spaces. So we say that, let's say E, a subset of a metric space is totally bounded if no matter how small the radius for all R positive, you can cover E with finitely many balls of radius R. That is, again, no matter how small your radius is, you can cover your space S with balls of radius R. So finitely many of those. Kind of like, again, fixed balls of a fixed radius, like this R, 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 R. Okay. And for instance, an example of a totally bounded set, just take this closed square in R2, because that square, no matter how small the radius is, you can cover it with balls of that radius. Kind of like this. And, well, you may ask, are there other examples of totally bounded sets? Well, now I'm going to show simply the following, that if a set is compact, then it is totally bounded which will give us a lot of examples of those totally bounded sets. So fact, if E is compact, then it is totally bounded. It is totally bounded. Sounds like total body conditioning almost. Um, And I like this because in my opinion it's literally the easiest compactness proof there is because those are usually very hard but this one is not too bad because proof fix R and just cover your set with those balls. So consider the following cover U which is just set of balls of this fixed radius R but where x ranges over your whole space. So in other words, literally cover your set again with those balls. Okay. This is capital U, and then because the set, your space is compact, this has a finite subcover. So since E is compact, U has a finite subcover. Uh, let's say BX1, R, uh, BX2, R, up to BXN. But what do we get? We get finitely many balls that cover your space. So we have finite balls, finite number of balls, that cover E. How nice is that? And of course you may ask, what about the converse? Are there sets that are totally bounded, uh, but not compact? Sure they are, they like consider like open sets, like the open square, well, you can still cover it with finitely many balls. However, it is not compact because it's not closed, if you want. Um, however, there is something, in fact, called the generalized heine borel theorem that says if you're in a complete metric space and E is closed and totally bounded, so in complete metric spaces, closed plus totally bounded, that does imply compact. So, 
um, in fact, therefore, in um, what's it called in complete metric spaces, compact is equivalent to closed and totally bounded. However, that's not what we want to prove today. I want to just give you another really neat application of total boundedness. It's not the it's not the result that's cool in my opinion is to prove that's very neat. So recall what does separable mean? So E is separable if E has a um, countable dense subset. For instance, uh, the rational numbers are separable. Oh no, so the real numbers are separable because what's a countable then subset? Well, just take the rational numbers because Q is a countable, it's countable and it's dense in R. or also RK, that's also separable. And in fact, what I want to show you now that is that any totally bounded set is uh, separable. So claim, if E is totally bounded, then E is separable. Why is that true? Because, well, here's the proof. And again, I really like the proof here. So step one, again, we know no matter how small the radius, we can cover your space with finitely many balls of that radius. So with R equals one, cover uh, your sp space E with balls of radius one. Then, since E is totally bounded, is totally bounded, what we know is that there are some finite number of balls, let's call it B, let's say X1, okay, we'll do it by steps, so let's say X1, 1, 1, uh, X, x uh, 1 2 1 up to b x capital n 1 1 1 cover e and again this is uh, slightly confusing notation but all i'm saying is in the first step that's uppercase one indicates the step Okay, so in the first step, we can cover E with finitely many balls of radius one. So all the balls, they have radius one, except your centers are of course different. And we say the first center is X1, but to emphasize it's the first step, we'll put a one here. The second center is X2, and then again, first step, third center, first step, up to last center, first step. And again, all those balls have radius uh, one, and well, then we can continue with the radius being one half. Okay. Similarly, we know that uh, since E is totally bounded, We also know that we can cover E with balls of radius one half. So B, uh, X, again, second step. So we put an uppercase two, one, one half. B, X, uh, uppercase two, two, one half, up to B, uppercase, um, what's called two, uh, N2, one half, cover E. 
So same thing, except this time the radius is one half. Before the radius was one, and now the radius is one half. So we get something like that. That's E. And then we have smaller balls. Kind of like that. Etc. Etc. Again, of radius one half. And then again, the first center, we call it usually x1, but it's the second step here. And then also second center is x2, but second step up to x2, uh, xn2, and the last. So the last center and the second step. And then you can continue the same way. So in general, with n, so step three, with r equals one over n, since e is totally bounded, can cover uh, e with balls against radius one over n. So nth step, first center, nth step, second center, up to B X yeah. capital N, uh, N, N center, one over N. Okay, and then, well, um, what's going on? Okay, well look, at each step, we can cover your space with small and small balls. And now, remember what our goal was. Our goal was to find a countable dense subset. Well, just consider the centers of the ball. Because we're kind of saying, well, we're kind of covering um, the space with like those points, but like little balls around it. So in particular, consider the following set. So it's one step four. Consider F to be just the centers of all the balls. So remember for the first step, we got centers X11, X12, dot, 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 X1, N1. And then the second center, we got X21, X22, X2. N2, and in general, we got Xn1, Xn2, Xn, again, capital N, capital N, N, N. I know you're so tempted to do a diagonal argument, but I'm so sorry, that's not what we're doing here. However, what do we have? At each step, we have a finite number of centers, because we have a finite number of balls. And therefore, what is F? Well, it's the union of, the, it's the countable union of finite sets, so F is countable. So F is countable. So it's in the countable union of finite sets. Because again, again, what, what are we doing? So we covered your space with smaller and smaller balls. We let F to be the union of all the centers. And then we just need to show that F is dense, but that's not hard to show. Claim F is dense. Well, suppose um, X is a random point in E. and r is any radius, what we want to show is that uh, there is an um, element in f that is at least, uh, at most, r away from x. So what we want to do, we want to find um, y in f with dxy is less than r. So we want to find, given any point x, we want to find an arbitrarily close element to it. But then the point is, 
if r is given, just find n that is um, what's called, um, smaller than, such that 1 over n is smaller than r. So, but now, um, find, so let n be such that 1 over n is less than r, but then we know that the balls uh, of uh, radius 1 over n, they cover your space, Again, remember we define uh, the centers and the radii so that the balls uh, of radius 1 over n at each step covers your space. But then what do we have? We know x is in E and the balls, they cover your space. So in particular, we can find some ball such that x is in that ball. So by definition, there is some center, some, let's say, x, n, m. So here's some center, uh, x, at the nth step and the m point, such that, and again, this center is by definition in your set, such that the distance between x if you want such that x is in your set, b x n m uh, 1 over n. But then, with y equals x n m, we get that the distance between x and y, which is the distance between x and x m and m, by definition, is less than 1 over n. But then, remember, we chose n such that 1 over n is less than r, so it's less than r. So in particular, dxy is less than r. And therefore, given any point, given any point x, we found another point in your set that's arbitrarily close to it, and therefore it's separable. Therefore, f is countable and dense, so we found a countable dense subset, and therefore your space itself is separable. All right, thank you very much.